Hey everyone, welcome back to my After Effects tutorial. Today, we are going to create this. So let's get started. Open After Effects and create a new composition. Let's call it Elegant Logo Animation. As always, I am using the 1920 by 1080 resolution, at 30 frames per second, and a duration of 10 seconds. Now, create a new solid. And call it Background. You can make it in any color you want. Now go to the Effects and the Presets and search for the ramp, it may be the gradient ramp in your version of After Effects, apply it onto the background layer, and let's do the changes. First, change ramp shape to the radial ramp. And then click on the swap color, if swap color option is not available in your version, then change the color manually, just replace color white with black, and black with white. Now place the top anchor point to the center and the bottom point far away from the center. Now you have this nice looking background. Cool. It's time to import our data into the project. I have the logo, lens flare, and logo intro music, made by the Maximus. You can check their channel link in the description. First, place your logo on the timeline, and adjust the size if you need. Now right click on your logo, and pre-compose it, Let's call it logo here, and then make sure to select move all attributes option. I am going to make this logo a 3D layer, so we can rotate it. If you don't see your switches tab here, press F4 to switch between. If your F4 key is on a mission to find the vibranium, then right click here, go to the columns, and select modes, and switches together, because we are going to use both options. Now click on this cube icon to make your layer 3D. Go to the one second forward. Then press P, to open position, and add a keyframe on it. Press R, to open rotation, and add keyframes on these X, Y, and Z rotations as well. Press S, and add a keyframe on the scale as well. Now, press U, to open all keyframes. Go to the first frame, and first change the position of it. Meanwhile, change the X rotation to 90 degrees, Y rotation to 1 times, or 360 degrees, and Z rotation to 120 degrees. You must be thinking, how the hell in this world I know the exact number of it? It is because, I am recording this tutorial 12th time. Every time I tried to record this video, my computer tried to shut down by its own. It's not artificial intelligence, just some random power cuts. Here we have this boring animation. As you can see, this animation doesn't have the depth like we had in our intro, it is moving around this axis only. So let's fix this. Go to the first frame. And then, press A, to open anchor point, and change the last anchor point value to 250. Now we have the depth we need. Perfect, this looking much better. Now press U, to open keyframes. Go to the first frame and change the scale value to 80%. Also press T, to open opacity, and add a keyframe on it. Place this keyframe onto the 15th frame. You can always zoom in and zoom out your timeline by pressing plus, and minus key on your keyboard. Go to the first frame, and change the opacity value to 0%. Now we have the fade in effect. Again press U, to open keyframes, select all keyframes, right click on it, go to keyframe assistant, 
and select Easy Ease. Now select End Keyframes, open Graph Editor, and change the curve to something like this. If your graph doesn't look like this, right click here, and select Edit Speed Graph. Switch back to the timeline, and your animation should look like this. Let's place this scale end keyframe on 6th second, just to increase our scale animation timing. Perfect. Let's turn on the motion blur by clicking here, and then click here to activate it. Minimize this layer, and then make a new solid. We will call it the reflection. Make it to the comp size, and then hit OK. Now go to the effects and the presets, and search for the fractal noise. Apply it onto the layer, and adjust a few settings. First of all, change contrast to 150, and brightness to negative 50. Most important, change the fractal type to max. Now expand this transform option, and uncheck this uniform scaling. Here in the below, change the scale height value to 2000, and scale width to 30. It's time to animate it. Make sure you are in the first frame. And then add a keyframe on the offset turbulence. Go to the end frame, and change the first offset turbulence value to 1500. Here we have this kind of animation. Now again go to the effects and the presets, and search for the fast blur, Apply it onto the same layer, and then increase the blurriness to 40, and check this repeat edge pixel. Cool. Now right click on it, and select pre-compose. We will call it reflection, and make sure to select move all attributes into the new composition. Now select this logo comp, and press Ctrl plus D, to make a duplicate of it. Place this logo comp on top of all layers. And then, in the reflection layer, change the track mat to alpha mat. Here you can see our reflection is having this logo shape. But it has changed the color of our logo. So, change its blending mode to the screen. Now select your logo layer. And then go to the effects and the presets. Here search for the linear wipe effect. Apply it onto the top logo layer, and then follow my step. As you can see, this reflection is covering my entire logo, but we want it to place over half logo only. So here change the transition completion value to 48%, and wipe angle to 0 degrees. Now we have this reflection on our half logo, but the edge is looking too hard. So increase the feather value to 20, and now it is much softer. Let's make it 60, for more soft edges. You are always free to adjust the look according to your need. Perfect, this looks good to me. It's time to add shadow to it, you can skip this step because it will take the high processing power to render the shadow. But if you want to burn your computer, then follow this step. For generating the shadow, we need to create a floor for it. For doing this, make a duplicate of your background layer and rename it as the floor. You can delete the gradient ramp from this floor, because we don't need it. Now make this layer a 3D layer, and the press R, to open rotation. Here change the X rotation value to 100 degrees. And then go to the tools, and select the shape tool. Press and hold on it, and then select the ellipse tool. Double click on it to apply it onto the layer. Now, let's add some feather to it, to make the edges smooth. Press F to open feather, and change the feather value to 200 pixels. But we still have these hard edges. So, expand this mask option. 
and change the mask expansion value to negative 190 pixels. Now press S to open scale and change the scale value to 500%. But it is covering our logo. We have to change the position of this floor layer so that it will be below our logo layer. After selecting the floor layer, we would have these arrows to change the position of this layer. Simple grab the arrow which is pointing to the bottom, and then slide it below to change its position. Cool. I am keeping this distance. Now, create a new light, yes we are doing it for the first time. I am using a spotlight, and make sure to check this cast shadow option, also, my shadow darkness, and shadow diffusion is set to 100. Hit OK, and this is the ugliest thing you are seeing today. The first step is to point the light into the center, so that, the shadow will be in the center also, grab these handles, and point them to the center of the logo. Let's place the light on top, just to organize the timeline. Select the floor layer, and minimize its all properties. In the bottom, you will find this material option, expand it, and then turn on the cast shadow. And also, turn off this accept lights. Scroll to the top, and expand this logo layer as well. In its material options, turn on the cast shadow. And here we have this nice looking shadow, but it is too dark. So expand this light layer, and then the light option. Here change the shadow darkness to 50%. As well as, change the shadow diffusion to 50. Or you can keep the setting which you like the most. It's time to add our lens flare to it, but before, let's make some room for it. Select all layers, and press U, to minimize all the layers. Place this video on top of all layers, and then change its blending mode to screen. Make a duplicate of it, right click on it, go to the transform, and select flip horizontal. Now press T, to open opacity, and change the opacity value to 25%. Last time go to the effects and the presets, and this time search for the hue saturation effect and then change the master hue value to 135 degrees. Ram preview this, and our animation is complete, I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching this tutorial, have a good day.